In this video, we're going to introduce zero order rate laws. Now, uh, this will be a very quick video because zero order rate laws are fairly easy. I don't feel like I need to go through another example of calculating rates here. Um, for zero order rate laws, what that means, right? If we have our general reaction where we have some reactant A forming products, right? So having that as our general reaction, um, if a rate is, if a, a reaction follows zero order kinetics, then that means that we can express the rate law in the following way, where we'll have the change in concentration over time as our way of expressing the rate. And that's going to be equal to K times the concentration of A raised to the zero power, right? Now, anything raised to the zero power is one. So we basically write out the rate differential rate law like this. Now, what does this mean? This, this means that the rate will have no dependence on the concentration of the reactant, right? So regardless of how much um, of your reactants you start with uh, or how little you start with, it will have no bearing on the rate of the reaction. It's going to be consistent, has no dependence on the concentration of the reactant, right? So um, if you, so you wanna get, this is our differential rate law. So if we wanna get the integrated rate law, right? You would integrate both sides again, and if you've, you know, spend any time in a calculus class, this is a pretty easy integral to get through, right? You'll end up with the concentration of A being equal to negative KT plus the concentration, the initial concentration of A, right? So this will be your differential rate law. This will be your integrated rate law. And in order to get the half-life expression, again, at T1 half, we know that the concentration of A will be equal to one half the initial concentration of our reactant, right? So when you do that and do some algebra with that expression, you get T1 half is equal to the initial concentration over two times K, right? So then this will be your half-life expression. So for all practical purposes, especially for a general chemistry class, most of the numerical examples that you would have to solve are going to fall into one of the three buckets that we've covered. It'll either be a first order reaction, a second order reaction, or a zero order reaction. Now that doesn't mean that more orders of reactions don't exist, they definitely do, uh, but these are the most common ones. If a reaction falls into a common, uh, if a, a reaction that depends on a single product, a single reactant, I should say, uh, falls into a bucket of simple kinetics, it falls into one of these general buckets, zero order, first order, or second order.